While enjoying my granola with milk and blueberries, I was sharing it with a bee, and then I kept telling him, don't fall in the milk, and he fell in. And I saved him with a spoon. He's like, oh, this stuff is so good. He needs to dry out first, because he can't take off, because it's all wet. See those big boulders? See where that guy's truck is, and there's his tent? There you go. Hey, he went around the boulders last night, and a girl came back and was moving all kinds of shit in at three o'clock in the morning into his tent. My struggle right now, it's Sunday and the library is closed. I thought I could sit, plug in, map my route, use a bigger computer screen. Well, I've been hanging here for two hours trying to sit in the shade and move my solar panel while I use my phone since there's nowhere I can plug in besides that burger joint I was at for three hours yesterday. Literally been scrolling through Google Map and it looks like the road I'm taking out of here is actually part of the Wild West route. I'm so tired and my back is killing me and this process is so tedious. I landed on a Sunday, which is my fault. And the whole virus thing is limiting other places like cafes and stuff that would normally be an outlet to get this stuff done. Two people start walking towards the road. It's <laughs> and it's Max and Candy. <laughs> it feels so like it's such a small world, right? Yeah. So we we met up at Red Meadow Lake, yes. which is yeah. way far Red away from here. You look so fresh as a daisy. <laughs> I said, Candy, could that be? It's been four days. Can't be. Should we go back? I don't know. It couldn't possibly. But how many blonde cyclists are there in the this world? Is... No way. It had to be Naomi. This is a place with, I think, waterfalls and a suspension bridge. Kootenai Falls. And snacks and ice cream. Nothing like a huckleberry cone to get me started. And the prices at the little stand that the women have, totally reasonable. There's a little winding walk that will get you to the bridge. It's not bad. People seem to be complaining, but it's really hot in the sunny sections. And I'm noticing a lot of people are out of shape. Oh, nice. Oh, these rapids look awesome. Excuse me while I finish off my huckleberry ice cream cone. Made a great addition to the hike. When guys like, oh, you know, if I had to pick one, I'd go with the falls. I, I don't know, the suspension bridge is kind of cool because traveling around the U.S., so the chance of seeing a waterfall is more likely than like being able to walk on a suspension bridge. And it's a really cool feeling, especially for children. Or it's going to scare you, I don't know. It was kind of quiet here and I come across and I start <laughs> jumping up and down in the middle. <laughs> I'm trying to get a lot of bounce out of it. I see people, I quickly get to the other side. I'm like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to make you wait. And they go, no, we were just really enjoying watching you have a good time and you're so brave. And then the one guy's like, are you the cyclist I saw on the freeway? And I'm like, probably. And he goes, wow, yeah, you are really brave. And it's just so funny, the definition of brave because I'm just being a goofball. I mean, there's zero fear factor for me. Same goes for biking on the road. I don't ever think of a car as everyone's been really respectful. I'm actually more concerned about running over nails or debris than worrying about people. But anyway, so I just thought, all right, I'll take that compliment. It was just an interesting word to choose. But again, it's all relative, right? Now I've cleaned the, also the peanuts out of my mouth from my snacks I got from Max and Candy. My sag wag. Time to walk back, get a lemonade. Or should I get another huckleberry ice cream cone? I think I have, I'm going to say 20 two miles till I get to the halfway house place at that lake that I don't remember the name of where I'm supposed to be camping somewhere around there. And it's like 3.30. I almost was like, oh, I really should just keep pedaling because you know you don't want to end up pedaling until eight o'clock at night. And you, although you don't, I want to be a tourist. I want to see these things and stop and, and, and relax and enjoy them and not rush in and rush out. And wherever I land on my bicycle, I land on my bicycle. I passed the turn off that we're gonna go back and take. I thought there'd be a gas station maybe at the intersection. We're gonna have to go into Troy. Yeah, it looks like a pretty steep grade. I should have got water where I just last was. 
fuck, how big is this? Oh, uh, well, it is what it is. Bike life. We'll get to see what little Troy looks like. It's like 4.30. Well, I've been going down a steep hill, then a gradual hill, so needless to say, it's gonna be a grind getting out of here. Hit or miss with the masks, and I'm only one town south. This is so bizarre. Okay, I need water. I'm outside now going, ah, oh, how can I hitch a ride up the hill to get out of here? That's Mark. He just came up to me in the supermarket and he's like, are you the girl with the, the bike outside? And I'm like, yeah. Told me that I can stay at some gun place, gun club, right just south of um, the halfway house. And he just comes out and he goes, no, I got a truck over there. I got to just drop this stuff off. I can go back and get you and I can at least get you up the hill. <laughs> I'm like, seriously? Oh my gosh. That's like dream come true. You have no idea because it's hot out if you can't tell by looking at me. That's so fantastic. This is Mark. He's saving me up the grind of a hill that I was complaining when I was coming down just to come into Troy because I didn't lug water from Libby. I think I jumped up in the air when you said that. I just stepped out of the supermarket going, maybe I should just hang out here and see if somebody comes by. And then you pop out two seconds later. I'll throw one other thing out at you. If my 16 year old daughter wants the vehicle and she doesn't want it for the next 35 minutes, my wife and I'll run you right out there if you want. Oh. I mean, well, that would I mean, be nice. I'd be open to that. I'll meet, I mean, it or will. even halfway. But if I, she wants the car, then you're out of luck. That's I guess. okay. That's okay. I'm not going to argue with my 16 year old. <laughs> I lose those battles all the time. The Rod and Gun Call basically is we camp out there. So okay, my wife and I were out there for the last four days. We okay. just came home. And we have two shoots a year, trap shoots, and then that's it. We don't know how to rent it to bikers because it's just it's so hard to do because we rent it off for 200 bucks a night to campers. 200 night for campers? Well, we got to probably two acres, three acres of land. Oh, so it's it's like it's a, a whole event. Place. It's a yeah. whole, okay. So they, they come in with their um, their big campers. Oh, okay. And, and so you have four, five, six campers, so it's cheap. Yes, it and you, is. I you get you. And you got your own dock, you got your own lake, you got your own, okay. you get the whole property. That's right. how we make our money to pay for it. Bikers, it just doesn't work. So whenever we run into bikers, if you want to stay there, stay there, you know? Oh, well, that's so generous of you. It's so kind. I'm just winging it on my way back to Boise. We'll stop at my house. We meet my wife, Melanie. Oh, nice. I'll ask my daughter if she can spare a guitar for about 40 minutes. So his house was actually located on the road in the direction that I'm going. They've lived here since 95. She's a kindergarten teacher. He's a physical education special ed. There's the main road. This is amazing. So we have a little sink, the grills, there's little outhouses over there. And they're just looking to cover their fees, which are 4,000 a year. They're not really trying to turn it into something really busy. They just want to maintain, cover their costs. Let me ask if I could just leave the sprinkler, re rerun it once it, it's on a timer. Oh gosh, I don't care that I didn't bike this whole section. Well, I need to bike it. No, I don't. The value of having a conversation with him over road, pedaling. I have a beach. Oh look, there's somebody swimming with a yellow tube attached to them. Now I feel like I'm on vacation. This lake is almost eight miles long. It's all like soft sand at the bottom of this lake. I don't see rock. I wonder if you get the boat if you rent the place. Oh my gosh, this feels so amazing. That mountain range, gorgeous. I just turned the lights on. <laughs> it's so pretty. And when it's really dark out, it'll be even prettier. There's these teeny, teeny mosquitoes. It's so funny, the different sizes based on the area. I feel they almost have a bigger, they're biting more than the big ones. Once again, I am touched by the generosity of strangers and just how things seem to just fall in my lap. I was just biking, complaining about going into Troy, coming down the hill. And some guy happens to be in the supermarket at the same time as me and he only bought like four things chose to come up to me and track me down the supermarket because it's like excuse me excuse me he was asking me about my bike bags and how they were just sort of compact versus the panniers and then that was it we kind of say goodbye and then i went outside and i'm putting stuff on my bike and i'm literally sitting there going gosh if i could just get up this hill to get out of troy and get back to the turn off that would be fantastic and he comes out like within 30 seconds. And here I am at this beautiful spot. If somebody said when I pass the turn off, don't worry, Naomi, within 20 minutes, you're going to be in a car on your way to a beautiful camp spot. <laughs> I'd be like, what? How is that supposed to happen? Amazing. Incredible. The generosity of others. It's out there.
And wherever I land on my bicycle, I land on my bicycle. I don't know if I mentioned, but this is Bull Lake. And these mountains coming up are the Cabinet Mountains. So Troy is, I guess, around 1,600 feet elevation. And the Cabinet Mountains, I believe, shoot up to 6,500. Time to get ready for Betty Bye.